Radio Australia. Transmitting through the Melbourne studios of the Australian Broadcasting Commission. Radio Australia, the overseas service of the Australian Broadcasting Commission. We're transmitting the North America and Central Pacific service on 17.84 megacycles per second, 16.82 meters, 15.32 megacycles, 19.58 meters, and 21.74 megacycles, 13.80 meters. The time in Eastern Australia is 11.01 hours. On the morning of Friday, the 11th of July, 1969. And this is Vic Kennedy, pleased to be with you once more for the next hour. The South Australian Senator, Nick Xenophon, says the ABC has underestimated the impact shutting down its shortwave service will have. The broadcaster will today switch off its shortwave transmission in remote parts of northern Australia and across the Pacific. Senator Xenophon says he plans to introduce legislation next week to force the ABC to reinstate the service. He says the loss of the service will be felt far and wide. The fact is this will affect thousands of Australians who are in remote areas, but it seems it will affect many tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of people that are regular Radio Australia listeners throughout the region. The Northern Territory Cattlemen's Association Chief Executive Officer Tracy Hayes says many Territorians feel abandoned by the decision to switch off the shortwave service. This sends a fairly strong signal to people that live in the bush that they are no longer the national broadcaster and that they simply have lost interest. For those of us that live and work in rural areas, and it's very difficult to, uh, to draw any other conclusion. some reason or another, you sound a little taller on radio. 
Hello, everybody. Super Bowl Sunday's coming. Welcome to the only live daily ham radio podcast that's on YouTube. This is Ham Radio Live. I'd like to ask you to please hit that subscribe button. Help people find us here on YouTube. In fact, it's been huge, huge. 13% growth on subscribers in the last three weeks. I want to thank you very, very much for that for sure. Yeah, that's big. Thank you, guys. Please subscribe. Help people that have an interest in ham radio to find the channel here. And we appreciate it because there's no ads here. There's no monetization. Don't have to watch a stupid ad and then hit that skip ad button in five seconds. Who in the heck likes that, right? Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Good to see you. Happy Friday. We made it. Friday. Yeah. CQ calling tonight. Going to be excited about that. By the way, see the blue pillowcase cover over there? It's a brand new radio. Yeah. Brand new radio. First time using it will be tonight on CQ calling. I can tell you this. It's one of the most popular and hottest ham radio selling transceivers right now in the world underneath that case we'll use it tonight i don't want to disclose what it is yet watch tonight coming up at 0 100 technically saturday utc we'll have the show with cq calling we'll see who the very first qso will be i won't make any qso's with it whatsoever until we do the show i promise you it'll be worth it okay welcome to the show everybody from around the world we've got gunter in the house from germany welcome welcome Stu foster all the way here as well from great britain what a joy thanks for the thumbs up everybody appreciate that today was supposed to be a special show where raleigh dk well, sorry gonna do it again zl1 bqd was going to be here on the show and i contacted and contacted and con i can't reach him i've just tried real hard i think raleigh probably had something that came up. He just couldn't make it. So we'll reschedule that. So if you're here to see Raleigh and find out about all of his de-expedition stuff, you have my humble apologies for that. Okay. We had it set up, but something came up and we'll just understand that things happen. That's the way life is. So I'm sorry that happened to us. Okay. Got a show cobbled together for you for us here. I was planning to have just Raleigh today, but we've got some stuff. Friday is always Extra Fridays, where we work on the extra exam, try and get people licensed up to the top class here in the U.S., gives you all the frequencies. Now, over in general, it's only about 3% more, but still, you know, that 3% is kind of nice because you don't have to worry about any band plan violations if you're not quite there, okay? I'd like to welcome you all to the show today. Thank you again for everything. I love receiving comments like this. And your emails from around the world still astound me. I, I'm, I did this because I missed radio. I just missed being on the radio because it was fun. And I never expected to make so many friends from around the world. I really do. And Gunter, I probably haven't checked the WhatsApp for a while. I'm sorry. It's been real busy. Bob's thing yesterday did, did not come back good. So keep my brother in your prayers. It was a rough day. So we'll work on that. But in the meantime, let's try and get some stuff together for folks on the extra. Hope you like the opening cut. That's a neat show, by the way. Great Burt Reynolds movie, The Longest Yard is what that was. I was going to show the whole clip. It's a little long. And with the Radio Australia open, which was already three minutes, it was like, eh. see, and by the way, the Radio Australia part, I want you to know, that's a station that was so iconic on shortwave. And it still exists. It did come back, but in a different form. If you wanted to hear top 40 music back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, ABC, man, it was there. Radio Australia, they played it. It was awesome to hear on shortwave. So them shutting down their frequencies, their shortwave broadcasts, was really a big deal. So that was actually inside Radio Australia watching those Harris transmitters shut down. Okay, we have one more at the end of the show. I want to tell you about it before you, if you're thinking of moving, don't go nowhere yet. <laughs> the sign off today is exceptionally rare, very rare, hard to find, but I located it. And it also has to do with HF shortwave station closed down. Yep, from a very popular country that no longer broadcasts on shortwave. 
It's their final broadcast and their final sign-off. That'll be coming up at the end of the show. Welcome, Greg. Kilo Fox Zero, Charlie Union Zulu. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here, Greg. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. It's always good to see you. Tom's in the house all the way from Bahrain. My goodness, Tom. Thanks for coming, buddy. Nice to see you. I hope things are well for you there in the Middle East. All right, let's get this test on the road here. First question on the extra. This is uh, this is not easy for a lot of hams to figure out. So what we're going to do is I'll try and help explain it, okay? This essentially is an antenna radiation pattern sheet. Tells you which way your beam is going if you're using a directional, okay? If you're using a just a regular vertical antenna, right? your vertical is just going to go omnidirectionally, which means in all directions, okay? A dipole is going to come off broadside. So from the V, if you turn it sideways, make your hands go out from that V, it's going to transmit with more gain in both directions on the side. But a directional is set up to move in one way. This is one of those examples of what the transmit pattern would be. So in this case, it's asking in the N9-1, what is the front to back ratio? Now for new hams or people who are studying for the extra, front to back in antenna terms means how much gain do you have going forward versus what you have going backwards, okay? And you measure it, okay, with front to back, you measure it from the back to the front. What's the difference? In this case, it's 18 decibels, 18 dB. That's the answer, okay? And you can find that in the way that the elevation, sorry, the way that the lobes come out on this chart, the answer is 18 dB. Get to know those charts because there's plenty of those out there. And again, my apologies for Raleigh not being here. Raleigh's such a nice guy. It just had to be something that came up. So please forgive me for that, okay? Oh my goodness, dad, my father-in-law, Bill Weinger in the house from Tracy, California. Welcome. He's Kilo November 6, India Ocean Papa. Welcome to Tracy, California in the house. Will Myers, hi all from Bruce, Wisconsin, watching while working. So I'll be on and off. Have to catch the entire stream later. Will, it's an honor to have you. Thanks for coming. Again, on the extra for the United States Extra Exam. Extra Fridays here on Ham Radio Live. How does a narrow band roofing filter affect receiver performance? Okay, roofing filters, when they're narrow banded, okay, they have a big effect on the way your receiver works. Okay. In this case, the answer is C. It improves your dynamic range by attenuating strong signals near the receive frequency. Okay. Now, attenuation means to bring down, to lower, to help to improve the ability to receive the weak signals. Okay. So, a narrow band roofing filter will help you if you're trying to receive maybe some rare DX from a faraway station that's not coming in very strong but you have someone that's close on frequency that is strong. That's where that narrow band roofing filter will help you because what it does really is it pretty much is like a wall. And then if the strong frequency is maybe right over here, right? Just a little bit, a little close, right? That narrow band filter helps to block it out. That's why the dynamic range improves, okay? So keep that in mind. When you're dealing with narrow band roofing filters, Elecraft, famous for those, very sharp roofing filters. And that's why so many people in contesting and DX love Elecraft products. That's why. Sean Hartley, watching while mobile in the state of Oregon. Thank you, Sean. It's good to see you. What a joy. Harold Hunt is here. Harold, thank you. Thank you so much. Harold, hold on a second. Send, send me a copy of the email again. I get a lot of emails. I really do. And I don't, please don't take that as bragging. It is not. It just is. That's not me. Just that I get a lot of emails, okay, from both manufacturers and people that watch the channel. So please do me a favor, resend it, okay? I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Just resend it, okay? Thanks, buddy. All right, next question on the extra. U.S. exam. This is if you want that extra 3%, have a chance to get the four, you know, by call sign, the one by two or the two by one. Yeah. And hurry if you want to do that, too, because the FCC is going to be charging for vanity call signs very shortly. All right. What does the VOA CAP model software do? So really, what is it? What is the VOA CAP software model? OK, this is from the old days, it comes from the Voice of America. What it means is it's a forecast, essentially, for high frequency propagation. 
Okay. Voice of America, because they used so many transmitters throughout the HF spectrum, they had forecasters and they would make sure which bands they could use. Okay. So the VOA CAP software model helps to show you HF propagation. It helped them in the old days, Voice of America, to know what transmitters to use. Okay. So if maybe, for example, Okay, the 49 meter band wasn't working too well, which was rare, but it could happen. Okay, and maybe they needed to be up on, say, 60, or maybe they need to be on 13 or something like that. They would move their transmitters that direction because they had the best chance for communication. Okay, but VOA shares that information with people. So it'll help you determine how you can make calls. That's what the VOA CAP software model is all about. Welcome to the show. Next question. What is the primary characteristic of cordial hop? Well, cordial hop propagation. Cordial hop is awesome. It is so cool when you get it. Okay. What it means essentially is B, successive ionospheric reflections without an intermediate reflection from the ground. Okay. Let me try and explain this in layman's terms the best I can. Okay. Above our surface of the earth, you have layers of the ionosphere. Okay. First is the D layer. It's the closest to the Earth's surface, and it's very dense. It gets charged up during the day. At night, it disappears, okay? You need a frequency high enough to pierce through the D layer. Typically, that, that boundary is right about 7 megahertz, okay? So 40 meters is marginal. Above 40 is strong. It's going to work well to go through the D layer during the day. At night, the D layer is gone. That's why 160 and 80 slash 75 and 30 and 40 and all of those frequencies work better at night because there's no D layer to hurt them. Okay. So they bump up there to the E or F layer, which is way up there. All right. If you hit chordal hop, instead of the frequency coming up, the signal coming up to the ionosphere and then bouncing back down to earth and then waiting for it to bounce back up, to the ionosphere, the signal goes up in the ionosphere and it bounces around up there until it comes back down. So that's coral hop. It helps the transmit signal to go much farther because instead of it bouncing back down to earth right away, it stays up there and moves around for a while. It makes your long distance QSOs pretty popular. So long distance contacts are great when you get coral hop. Next question on the extra. What's meant by circularly polarized electromagnetic waves? Okay, so we know we have horizontal, right? We've got the horizontal wave and the vertical wave, okay? We know we have electromagnetic. We've got the electrical part and the magnetic part. This is not to be confused with that, okay? Electrical and magnetic are 90 degrees apart in a sine wave, okay? So they're very, very different. However, when we have circularly polarized electromagnetic waves, they are waves with a rotating electrical field. So imagine your transmit signal, if you could actually physically see it, you would have a sine wave going this way and then one going sideways, all right? As it moves, it's rotating, okay? So in this question, when we get to it, what this means is circularly polarized means the wave just rotates. That's all, okay? Sometimes we get so technical in ham radio, it can be confusing to folks. Don't let it confuse you. It's just simple technical things. Okay. And if you study and you put in the time to study, you can pass this exam. Okay. Remember you got 50 questions. That means you can get 13 wrong and still get your license for the extra. You can do it. All right. Next question on the extra. What do the letters F E C like Foxtrot echo Charlie mean as they relate to digital operation? When you're using digital Forward error correction, which is FEC, is important because when you're transmitting something, it helps to make sure that the receiving station receives exactly what you're trying to send without error, okay? It's important because there's a lot between you and that receiving station. You have a lot of distance, okay? Forward error correction helps you in case the signal kind of bounce around, hit some things. It doesn't work out quite well enough, right? So your received signal doesn't get heard well. FEC helps to make sure that when you send that digital signal, which is typically like a text message, right? It's received properly on the other end. Okay. 
that's basically it. Great Lakes Reliance is back. Good signals on 40. Counting on that tonight for CQ calling, man. I am. So that's good. I'm hopeful we get good 40. So this new radio behind me that's right now unknown will be shown and be working for the first time. Make some calls tonight on the new rig. Next question. It's on the FCC Extra. We do Extra Exam Friday only on Fridays. So the Extra Exam, if for those that want the extra 3%, Fridays are your day. All right. Which of the following data are used by the APRS network to communicate your location? Okay. So you're basically using digital here. Okay. And to find out where you're at, APRS built into it allows people to see your latitude and longitude. That's what it's all about. Okay. So the data that's included within the transmission will help to say where you're located. Okay. Where you're transmitting. That's all not too technical. Remember APRS is basically a way to communicate. All right. And it's communicating through a system that helps to determine where you're at. Okay. Was this good? Wait, I'm trying to get my wrinkled rear end to Studio C tonight. <laughs> yeah, good night to work, especially if 40's good, man. Absolutely, Gunter. Good luck. Okay, next, we're going to do three more. Next question. During a VHF UHF contest, so we're up on the high bands now, in which band segment would you expect to find the highest level of activity? And this answer is going to surprise you. It is C. In the weak signal segment of the band with most of the activity near the calling frequency on that band. Okay. Take a look at the calling frequency for whatever frequencies you're using in the contest. Could be two meters, might be 70 sems. Find out the calling frequency, but get near it if you're trying to make calls. Okay. So if you're trying to make those calls in a contest and you're on VHF or up on UHF, get near the national calling frequency. Give yourself some room and then make those calls. Contests are fun. They can be. I know some hams don't like them and I understand why, but this channel is for people who would like to get into ham radio and explore it. So contesting might be something that would really interest you. Okay. Next question. Why may the received signal from an amateur satellite exhibit a rapidly repeating fading effect? Okay. So this is more than just QSY. This is repeating QSY. Okay. For new hams, QSY, sorry, QSY, my goodness, sorry, a lot of my mind, QSB, a lot of QSB, so fading. Okay. So instead of it being just, you know, normal QSB, which means fade, it's rapidly repeating if you're working a satellite. Okay. The answer is A, it's because the satellite's simply spinning. Okay. That will give you a rapidly repeating fading effect. Okay. That's really all it is. A lot of people love to work satellites. Robbie from the channel here is excellent at it. Robbie, if you're here, keep up the good work. He does great SSB and stuff. So that's good. William Myers, Kilo Alpha 8, Golf India Mike. We had a foreign exchange student from Hamburg when I was a small kid from 68 to 69, I think. Good memories, man. I love those times. My brother and I talked about that the other day, Will you know, how much the world has changed. Many of us grew up in the last, I call it the analog generation, the very last analog generation, you know, when we didn't have cell phones attached to us or, you know, a smartphone. We just climbed trees and we played and we knew when the street lights came on, it was time to come home. That's the way it was. It was safe. You know, times have changed. They're different. Now I know I'm old because I'm sounding like my grandparents. Times have changed. Next question. Well, on what frequencies are spread spectrum transmission permitted? Spread spectrum is really transmitting wide transmit signals. That's what it means, okay? Using more bandwidth than necessary to make the call. So remember, spread spectrum. You know, some people could also say ESSB, right? Okay. So spread spectrum, using more bandwidth than necessary. But it can make you sound really good because you're Transmit signal will be full of fidelity because it's got lots of transmit bandwidth. Okay. The answer here is only on amateur frequencies above 222 megahertz. So only above 222. And a good way to remember this. Okay. This is up on 1.25 meters, by the way. Good way to remember this for us that are old enough to remember. Just remember the old TV show, Room 222. Yeah. 
that's one of the tricks I use to pass the test. I swear to you, I'm going to do a show. I, some people have asked, how did you do all three in one day? I will go into that with a show and it's not to brag. It's to help truly to help you. Okay. Once again, Raleigh ZL1 BQD couldn't make it today. We'll find out what happened. I'm sure something came up on his end. You have my apologies for him not being on the show. I'm sorry. He'll be coming though. I'm sure he will. And he has such great stories about the expeditions. Raleigh's one of the most humble and kind people I know. Next question. Last two on the extra. What must a VE team for New Ham's VE means veteran? I always do that. Why? I'm not sure. Volunteer examiner. Okay, so they volunteer their time to sit and watch you take a test to make sure you pass it. That's what VEs are. They're wonderful people. You know, they, instead of being in their yard or working on something in their house, they're at a test site to help someone pass their test. Wonderful people. So what must the volunteer examiner team do if an examinee scores a passing grade on all examination elements needed for an upgrade or new license? Okay. The answer is B, three volunteer examiners. Remember that for your, if you're a new ham or someone that would like to be a ham radio operator, you need three volunteer examiners there. Okay. They must certify that the examinee is qualified for the license grant and that they have complied with the administering volunteer examiner requirements. That's it. Okay. So you get a passing grade. Really what they do is they take your application, they sign their name to it, put their call sign by it, and that's it. Okay. The three of them do that. They hand the printed you know, and you signed it as well. They hand that document to the VEC, who's the volunteer examiner coordinator. And that person goes and sends it to the FCC. Once the FCC has it, they put your license in the ULS database and it shows there's a new call sign. If you're new to ham radio, if you have licensed up, you can use the license grant up right away. Just put the slash AG, or you could put AE if you're moving up to amateur extra and you're used to, you know, you still have the general license. So either AG for generals who've moved up from technician slash AE if you're a general that's just moved up to extra. All right, final question today on the amateur extra exam on Ham Radio Live. What is an Earth station in the amateur satellite service? This sounds really easy. Let me give you all four here because, okay, for a new ham or someone that's licensing up to this level, there's a few here that sound a little bit plausible. Okay, let's look at B and go down first, okay? So what's an earth station in the amateur satellite service? Is it B, an amateur station that is not able to communicate using amateur satellites? That sounds plausible, okay? C, an amateur station that transmits telemetry consisting of measurement of upper atmosphere. Okay, well, that could go to D, any amateur station on the surface of the earth. Now that sounds really plausible, but none of them are right. The correct answer for the test is A, an amateur station within 50 kilometers of the earth's surface. Remember, 50 kilometers and higher, you become a space radio station, okay? You become basically a satellite station, okay? So any amateur station that's lower than 50 kilometers of the Earth's surface intended for communications with amateur stations by means of objects in space. Okay, so technically, let's get down to brass tacks, as Ross Perot would say. What is an Earth station in the amateur satellite service? Remember, you were using amateur satellites. So basically a station that's, you know, below 50 kilometers of the Earth's surface that's making contacts using satellites that are above 50 kilometers to make their contacts. Welcome to the show. Happy Friday, everybody. It's nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Again, my apologies for Raleigh not making it. We'll find out what happened. He's such a nice guy. Five DXCC certificates. You know, a lot of people work their whole lives to get one. He has five. And he's literally, I think, three away from getting his sixth. That's amazing stuff. Really is. So we'll, we'll work with Raleigh and we'll find out about that. And his de-expedition stories as well as his YouTube. You can find him here on YouTube, by the way. Raleigh can be found just in the search bar. Put in 
his call sign, ZL1. So that's ZL1, Bravo, Quebec, Delta. Okay. ZL1, BQD. You'll find his list of some of the coolest the expedition stuff you've ever seen. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's nice to see you today. Let's get caught up with your comments. I've been watching them zoom in as I've been reading the questions. You guys have been just flying today. Andy Cowling, welcome to the show. Glad to see you. Thank you so much for coming. It's good to see you. Wow, a lot of people. Oh, look at this. My live stream and Callum start at the same time. Ah, man. I, Callum's on one and I'm on the other. Well, thank you for coming to this. That's that's very humbling. Wow. Thank you. Callum does good work. Thank you so much. Greg is studying for his extra as we speak. Greg, you can do it. You can do it. Okay. Don't let the extra really mess with you. Okay. It's not as hard as you might think, but it does take study. Don't, I don't want to minimize it. It does take time. But if you put your time into it, you can pass the extra. Remember, instead of missing eight, you can miss 13. That's a lot less pressure on you, okay? And there's no time limit. So just bring the calculator with you, bring what you remember, and do your best, okay? The best thing I can always tell you with taking the extra, always remember the frequency calculation. If you're trying to find out meter bands, that'll help a lot. 300 divided by whatever frequency they give you will help you tremendously because it's going to allow you the opportunity to determine what meter band it is, okay? Also helps you with antenna measurements as well. Keep that in mind, okay? Will Myers, hi all from Bruce, Wisconsin. Thank you for being here. And Harold, thank you very much for your kindness. I appreciate that. Glenn is here. Hey, Glenn, I hope you liked the opening. That was special. I thought of you when I did it. That was Radio Australia when it signed off the air. Yeah. That was, I thought of you right away because it was a neat find, really was. Thor is, nope, it's Great Lakes Reliance. Sorry, Kilo 8, India Bravo X-Ray. Welcome to the show, man. Great to see you. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate when you come, man. You've done great work with that antenna. 20 meters, what, 20 feet high? Holy crud, you're doing great. Frank, first time on the channel. Welcome. Can we get him a big woo? All right, Frank, Whiskey Bravo 8 Papa. Here's an extra right there. Frank, nice motorcycle too. Welcome to the show. Nice to see you. I appreciate you being here. I really do. Uh, Great Lakes Reliance here. Some good stuff on 40 meters. Norm is here from Massachusetts. Norm, welcome to the show. Always a pleasure. You know that. Nice for you to be here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's see. What do we got here? Uh, Scott's going to be on six after 6 p.m. Eastern. We'll be looking for you. We're going to be at 0100 UTC with CQ Calling. On the new transceiver, under the, the little pillowcase there, it'll be worth it. Trust me, it'll be worth it. It's one of the hottest transceivers in ham radio. So we'll see how it goes. That's going to be, if you're in North America, 5 p.m. Pacific, okay? 5 p.m. Pacific. All right, let's see. Catching up with y'all. James Stanley, welcome. Just watched the X Commander update. <laughs> yeah, see, Gallimar kind of going back and forth there. Well, thanks for being here. M7, Bravo, X-Ray, Tango. James, it's an honor to have you. Thanks for being here today. I appreciate it. Again, later today should be a lot of fun. We're going to really have a ball with this. And the first contact that I'll make ever on that transceiver will be on CQ Calling. So join us. If you're in North America, it's at 5 p.m. Pacific. If you're on World Time, 0100 UTC on Saturday. Okay. We'll be live having fun. I just hope it all works. You know, you've got to test it. You've got to make sure it works. So I'll do that. Make sure the signal's getting out. But first QSO will be on CQ calling. Daniel's here. Welcome. Good to see you, Daniel, as always. Thanks for coming. Don't forget this weekend, going to be a very special show on Sunday, Ham Talk Live, which is our, which is our biggest show. I mean, a lot of people from around the world come to that. Our question this Sunday, if you could work a de-expedition from anywhere in the world, where would you work from? Think about it. You know, go to a tropical island, maybe. Maybe you go in the middle of the woods or a jungle somewhere, you know, someplace really remote. Where would you work from? That's going to be Sunday's questions. Uh, so topic, topic question on DX uh, on our um, Ham Radio Talk channel show. going to be fun. I love that channel because when we do that show, everybody comes in and you guys steer the show. It's interesting to see the direction the show goes as we host it because everything I do here is live. Nothing is pre-produced except for the little clips at the beginning and end. But 
It's kind of neat. Okay. Now, there's a person I haven't seen here today, and I'm a little sad, and I'll tell you why. It's Martin. Martin's from the from Holland, from the Netherlands. Our sign-off today is a sad one, the last one that they did from Radio Netherlands. Back in the day, when people would use shortwave radios, and they still do, many shortwave folks out there, like Johan here from Barcelona, he and I share that passion for shortwave DX. It still exists. So does long wave, especially if you're closer to the East Coast in the U.S. You can hear those European stations. Here in the West, it's a little harder to hear long wave, but it still exists. Anyway, the, the sign-off is kind of a tough one. I want you to really listen to it because typically sign-offs, when they're the last ones, are always filled with passion. Tomorrow's will be as well. Very famous New York Station final sign-off. You'll like it, I hope. But this one really kind of hits your heart, right? It was after so many decades of broadcasting that Radio Netherlands had to go off the air. And I really thought of our friend Martin here. Martin uses an Alinko DX77. He loves it. Doesn't need the flashy screen. Doesn't need all the bling. He just wants a good radio. And he's found it. And he's happy with it. Well, Martin this is for you. I hope you enjoy it. And I hope for you folks that are here, you'll be here later for CQ calling at 0100 UTC. I also hope you get a chance to listen to this whole thing. It's a little bit long, but it's history. Sad history, but still history. Okay. I want you to take a look. This is the very final few moments of Radio Netherlands being on the air on shortwave. Okay. Until we meet again later on today at 0100 Zulu. My name's Larry. My call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. Please subscribe. The subscribe numbers blow me away, up 13% in three weeks. And the channel is growing way beyond what I thought it would. And it honors me and humbles me that that's happened. Thank you. Thank you. I promise you're not going to have any ads here. No skip ad button. Okay? Just please subscribe. Enjoy the sign off. We'll see you in a few hours on CQ Calling. Until then, God bless you guys. We'll see you soon. Responsible for the immense undertaking of delving through our archives for the making of this program and engineer Rick Kingma for putting it together. I'm Dira Sajan. On behalf of my colleagues, past and present, I'd like to thank you all for listening and wish you one final goodbye from Radio Netherlands worldwide. This is Radio Netherlands, the Dutch International Service. I'm Jonathan Gruber. Radio Netherlands, the Dutch International Service. There. I've said it for nearly the last time after 65 years on the air. The truth is, though, is that our pedigree goes back to the dawn of radio, and that's why we're playing Eddie Starts' nice cup of tea, his signature tune from Happy Station, which itself started in 1927 as part of PCJ Radio. We're coming to you now live from cell fear or studio four and and this is the little studio from which we broadcast everything at least since i've been here everything even since we automated our broadcasts it's all come from right here in this little room so it is fitting that we end here live and we're just minutes from the very end of the very last broadcast of Radio Netherlands in English. Dutch has already closed, and most of the other services are closing down as well today. And there's been a party atmosphere at the station. This will be in stark contrast with the silence of the near-empty building come Monday. And for this last broadcast, this is how we're going to go out. Right now, we're going to start the bells. I'm sure that most of you recognize this. It's Merk Toch Sterk, our interval signal that would announce Radio Netherlands' arrival to the short waves. And we'll play the bells to the end. And when they finish, we'll do something a little different. We'll play the Dutch national anthem, De Wilhelmus. And then, there will be silence. You won't hear from us again on short wave. But this isn't the end. Our new task 
for the few of us who are left behind will be to build something new and ambitious. For 65 years, we have been a broadcaster that has had the tremendous good fortune to be totally editorially independent. We were never a government mouthpiece. This was a rare thing during the heydays of shortwave, and it is today. So, as of Monday, we are being asked to look at the world and to search for places where the media is less than free and lend a hand. And in some cases, we'll be going to them, and where that's not possible, we will help them come to us. It's a worthy task, and I, for one, am happy to do it because, frankly, that's what we were doing anyway. Right? Hundreds of you have written in over the last weeks. We've read all your comments, and we feel really great about them, so thank you so much for writing. And above all, thank you for listening. Thank you for valuing what we did. Thank you for letting us know it was worthwhile. We are profoundly moved, and we hope that sometimes we moved you too. As Dr. Sue said, don't cry because it's over. Smile, because it happened. And so, on behalf of all of us here, for the last time from Hilversum in Holland, this is Radio Netherlands, the Dutch International Service. Thank you for listening, and goodbye. Goodbye!